Last time, we discussed that we'll take the postulational approach to quantum mechanics. Let us now look at the first postulate. So, postulate 1. This postulate is about the quantity that describes the state of a quantum system. Recall that in classical mechanics, the state of a system is completely described by the positions and momenta of each particle in the system. In contrast, the state of a quantum mechanical system is completely specified by a function psi of r and t that depends on the coordinates r of the particles and on time t. This psi of r is called the wave function of the system. It is called the wave function because it is similar to the function that describes a wave which is a function of both position and time. And note that although we use the symbol psi, we could have as well used f or g something that describes a function. There is nothing special about using the symbol psi. Although because of convention and because this has been used all the time in quantum mechanics, a wave function is typically denoted by psi. The wave function is in general a complex valued function. It does not have any physical meaning, but it contains all information about the system. Let us look at this little more carefully. So, for simplicity, consider a single particle quantum system and you will know that here is something there is this is which is different about quantum mechanics than classical mechanics that the position of this particle is not known precisely. But this wave function tells you something about the position of the particle and the wave function has this important property that when you do psi star psi multiplied by the volume element dx dy dz at the position r at time t, this is the probability that the particle lies in that volume dx dy dz at the position r at time t. For example, consider a particle which moves in only one spatial dimension. Okay, we have simplified our situation further. So, you have just one particle moving in one spatial dimension. And let us say that the psi in this case which is a function of x and t has this particular form. Then psi star psi which is this probability density looks like this. So, what does this tell you? It says that if you do a large number of experiments to see where the particle is, the particle can sometimes be found here and it can sometimes be found at a different x, but if you put a dot when you find the particle like this on this graph and you keep on adding a dot every time you find the particle when you do an experiment and keep doing this again and again with a large number of experiments, you will see that this dot has a distribution and lo and behold the distribution looks exactly like psi star psi. So, the wave function psi contains information about how the distribution of the position of these particles are going to be. There are certain properties that the wave function has. One of these properties is related to this probabilistic interpretation that the wave function has and that is that the, that the uh, wave function should be normalized. What it means is that the psi, that psi star psi multiplied by the volume element and integrated over all volume or summed over all volume is equal to 1. This is physically saying that the probability of the for finding the particle everywhere summed together is equal to 1, which is just a statement about sum of probabilities of an event being equal to 1. Now, a slightly weaker condition is that when you do the psi star psi integral, this integral should be finite. That is okay too, because in that case, you can simply multiply psi by a constant quantity to scale that finite number so that this integral does become equal to 1. In that, in that case, although we do not call the wave function to be normalized, we say it is normalizable and that is also a good enough condition, good enough property for a wave function. Additionally, the wave function and its first derivative should be continuous and finite. That is another requirement on the wave function for it to be a valid wave function describing a quantum system. Let us look at the wave function for multi-particle systems. For two particles, the wave function simply has the form psi r1, r2 function of time. So, now it is a function of two position variables r1 and r2 and the probabilistic interpretation is that psi, psi star psi 
multiplied the, by the volume element dx1, dy1, dz1 at r1 and the volume element dx2, y2, dz2 at r2 corresponds to the probability that particle 1 lies in this volume element dx1, dy1, dz1 at r1 and at the same time particle 2 lies in the volume element dx2, dy2, dz2 at r2 and all of this at a particular time t. This probabilistic interpretation can easily be extended to more than 2 particles. You just have to add a new position variable r3 for the third particle for example and then the probabilistic interpretation is extended in a way very similar to this 2 particle interpretation. So, in summary for any quantum system the wave function is the quantity that completely describes the system and that is the content of postulate 1. You might wonder whether psi star psi which tells which is the probability density tells you everything about the system. Think about it is that enough or are you losing some information when you do psi star psi. So, do you really need psi to, to know everything about the system or psi star psi which tells you about where the position of the system is, is that quantity enough. 